Let's take a look at uh, how to perform single sample hypothesis or Z test, single sample uh, Z test. Okay. So when will you proceed with conducting the Z test? What is the important uh, prerequisite? You should know the population standard deviation. If you know the population standard deviation, then we can do the Z test. But in, in this case, we are using a single sample. Hence, it is called a single sample Z test. Okay, so first of all, what is one sample Z test? It is, right, so to compare the mean of a sample to a known population mean when the population standard deviation is known. Okay, we are comparing the sample mean with the population mean. We are comparing the sample mean with the population mean in the case of uh, standard deviations. You know, that kind of situation, we can go for Z test. And um, in this case, what is happening is, um, uh, you know the but in addition to that you should be knowing uh, certain other things uh, in order to conduct a one sample z test the data should meet uh, certain assumptions okay the data must be independent the sample whatever you are drawing right so let's say you have drawn uh, you, uh, you you randomly sampled 10 cars all the cars are completely different okay but same brand but you are not trying the same car again and again okay Data must be independent, and then it is a continuous variable. Mileage is a continuous variable, normally distributed. The population is normal distribution. And obviously, if you know the population standard deviation, then you can do the one sample D test. So these are the assumptions. Okay, we're normally distributed, continuous, data must be independent. Try to digest everything. Okay, fine. The next one is uh, the case study. So in this case, um, let's say, uh, suppose uh, you work for a beverage company that produces the energy drinks, okay, that produces the energy drinks. The company um, says that each can of energy drink is supposed to contain 500 ml of uh, liquid. However, some customers have claimed that the company is not providing the advertised quantity. So the next step is, right, you want to test the claim, whether the claim made by the manufacturer. Okay, to investigate this, you randomly selected 50 cans and measured their contents. You open uh, each can and then, you know, the randomly sampled one, okay, and then you pour it in some, and then you measure it, how, many, how much ML is there in each can. And then you, uh, for 50 cans, you compute the average for your sample, um, 50 cans, okay, you get 498 ml. This is your sample mean. And your, let's say your sample standard deviation is 10 ml. Okay, uh, in this case, uh, the population standard deviation, let's assume that the population standard deviation is already known. The population standard deviation is, uh, let's say here, 10 ml. Let's say the population standard is 10 ml. Okay, let's assume that way, okay. Okay, so now your task is, you need to test the claim. So in order to do that, you have the population standard deviation. I'll just write the population standard deviation here. Let's say the population standard deviation is um, mu. Mu is 10, 10 ml. Population standard, sorry, this is population standard, sigma, okay. This is sigma, okay, fine. So your, your task is you want to um, you want to test, um, you want to test the claim. So you want to find out, is there any evidence that uh, the five percentage, I was talking about alpha, alpha, right? 0 0.05. So you, your task is you want to find out, are there any evidence at the five percentage significance level to support the customer's claim that the company is not providing or the company is providing the um, advertised quantity of the liquid. That is what the task uh, is there at your hand. It's very simple, isn't it? This alpha, don't worry, I will explain it again. So the next one is, uh, okay, to start with, uh, what is the, uh, of, uh, the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is 500 ml. The alternative hypothesis, in this case, uh, you want to conduct um, two-tailed test. Mu is not equal to 500. This is the hypothesis. You assume that whatever the uh, advertised whatever the quantity they mention as part of the advertisement that is your population mean you are assuming that okay mm, and here you want to test it hence you are writing alternate hypothesis and the next one is you need to collect the sample data and then you need to find out the 
sample mean here. You need to find out the sample mean. And then uh, you need to find out the sample standard deviation. The sample mean also they've given, they made our life simple for uh, 490 ml and then 10 ml. And then, okay, here also the sample standard is 10 ml. Okay, there also, um, okay, here uh, the sample standard deviation is not, um, okay, you just think this way, okay. So in this case, um, we need to find out all we see everything has been given okay we need to find out the um, z test statistic we need to plug in the value here we need to simply plug in the value here so how do we plug in the value here in this case simple very simple right um okay let's assume that the pop play okay i'll just write everything here for example, okay, in this case, um, we have collected this sample. How many number of samples uh, we have collected? 50 cans. Randomly, we have selected 50 cans. Okay, and then we measured the content. The sample mean already they've given. What is the sample mean? X bar is equivalent to 498 ml. And then the standard deviation, okay, in this case, let's say, you know, in this case, the standard deviation is 8 ml. Okay, 8 ml. And that is what they've given. Okay, but in the previously I mentioned about 10 ml, okay, let it be there. Okay, 8 ml. Okay, you just assume that this is your sample standard deviation. And then population standard deviation is uh, 10 ml. We know that. So, what is the formula for? uh the sorry the test statistic z is equivalent to x bar minus mu divided by sigma divided by square root of n what is x bar value here dandraj 498 minus the population minus uh what is the population mean the population mean is 500 right that is what we hypothesized and sigma is uh let's assume that the sigma is your um 10 ml okay your uh, sigma is 10 ml population standard division is 10 ml and then the square root of number of uh, samples are 50 what value we get it here so can someone compute this one quickly and tell me so here minus 2 in the numerator you get minus 2 and here you have 10 divided by square root of 50 how, will, how much you will get how much you will get <clears throat> you'll get some value, right? So here, if you compare everything, the Z value, what you get is minus 1.414. This is what your Z value. Okay, this is what your Z value. If you compare it, you will get this one. Uh, I believe all of you are with me, right? So now the question is, so let us visualize the same problem using this uh, chart, okay? So here, we have the two tail test. So we have the Z value. <clears throat> we need to check the Z value, right? If the Z value is less than the critical value. So how do I find out the critical So like I said, um, in this case, one minus, see the area under the curve is one. Okay, the area under the curve is one. So here, one minus alpha, alpha is 0 0.05. This is the conventional value used at 0 0.95. Divided by two, how much you will get? How much you get uh, uh, here? 45. And uh, how much you will get? Uh, one second. I'll just go here. Yeah, 0.4750. Okay, 0.4750. Right? 0 0.4750. This value, we will do a lookup here in this Z distribution table. 0 0.4750 is appearing here. So what is the corresponding horizontal value here? 1.9. And what is the corresponding vertical value? 0 0.06. 1.9.06 will give you 1.96. That is what your critical value. Here, since it's a left side, you need to use negative value. Since it's a right side, you need right tail, you need to use this value, plus 1.96. So left side, negative 1 point, plus right side, plus 1.96. Now you tell me if this 
um, Z values falling in this rejection region area or not. This is your non-rejection region area. If the Z value, Z values less than, this is what your critical value, critical value. Or if the Z values, sorry, greater than critical value, then only you are going to reject the null hypothesis. In this case, are we going to reject the null hypothesis or not? All of you, please type it in the chat window quickly. I gave the number, everything. Yes, you are correct. Uh, Deepa. Deepa is correct. Sai Sudha, you are correct. Shruti, you are correct. Shandarya, you are correct. Um, how about others? Leela, you are correct. So if you make it fast, right, uh, we will we will make our uh, you know thing a bit faster. Already we are falling behind. Tell me what is the, you know, here it's not a you know simple thing here. See, Z is minus one point. Sorry, this is your critical value. Okay, one second. I'll just uh, write here. Now we obtain the uh, z is equal to minus four one point four. Let's say you plugged in all the value. Your z is minus uh, one point uh, four one four or something like that. Okay, that is what your z value. That is what we have seen it. Okay, and what is the critical value? Critical value is my minus 1.96 in this case. The z value is less than, is this less than this one? That's all, that is the question. Simple math. See, if you say I don't understand, then you are biased. Okay, you are biased. You are not giving the um, correct feedback, okay? Or you are not concentrating. Maybe you are watching TV or something. Like that. See, you tell me what is the value here. So if you watch here, right, uh, you don't have to watch my video again because it's going to be a big video. So visually also we will look at this. My Z, the critical value is minus 1.96. On the left side is your rejection region area, rejection region. On the right side is 1.96. This is anything falls here, anything for the Z value. The Z value falls here, if the Z value falls here, then it is. So now you tell me, is this less than this one? Is this greater than that one? Or, or is this, uh, so, okay, in this case, if the Z value is less than critical value, or if the Z value is greater than critical value, we are going to reject the sub-zero. Yes, see, majority of the non-statistic students themselves responded. How about uh, others? So here, minus 1.414, you just simply plug in here, minus 1.96. And here, obviously this one, you know, we got negative value since it is not above critical value. Now is this less than or greater than? Come on guys, what happened? Tell me, tell me, make it fast. You know, almost uh, six people, they already answered correctly. So now you need to tell me. So don't think too much, okay? So how we got, you know, the, this calculation, you can also do it, right? So this one I explained you, how we need to get it. So one minus, since we are conducting two tail test, one minus alpha is 0 0.05. That you don't forget, about, forget about alpha. How you got, no, don't worry. One minus alpha gives you 0 0.9, something like that, or 0 0.479, if you give that. 1 minus alpha, we, we gave some value, right? That value you looked at here, 0.47 by 0. And you click horizontally and vertically, you got the uh, critical value as minus 1.96. If it is a left side, minus 1. Right side, minus 1. This is what the border line. See, somebody asks you, uh, between this is your India and Pakistan, you just think that way. So where the border starts for the Pakistan? If you know, okay, you are not supposed to cross this border. If you have to cross it, you need to get the valid visa. Otherwise, you are not supposed to cross it. Or India, China, you just think that way, okay? So, how do you decide this you know, border value? That is nothing but your critical value. That is what I explained to you. Forget about that one. Now, you tell me the simple answer. Minus, uh, minus 1.414 is less than minus 1.96. Do Googling. If you don't know, do Googling, no?
or is this greater than the c value minus 4 point uh, minus 1.414 so in this case uh, you know is this greater than this one what is that Yes, here uh, the Z values minus 1.414. Is this greater than uh, the critical value of 1.96? No. Is this less than this one? See, I just go here. You can open the Python or some calculator. Here I just put for you people, okay? Minus 1.414. Um, If you sub, you know, you, you need to compare this one, right? So greater than or minus 1.96. False, right? It is not less than this one. It is not less than this one. Okay, okay, correct. Is this greater than this one? True, minus uh, four one, right? So uh, correct, right? So here one point four one four is not less than this one. It is greater than this one, uh, but uh, in this case, right, in the right side, you know, it is not that, um, you know, yeah. So here we need to check false, but the right tail test is plus one point nine six. Okay, that you need to remember it here. So here. Uh, z is less than C V or Z is greater than in this case the Z C V is 1.9. This is for left side, left tail test. This is for right tail test. And if you see here, in both the cases, it is not uh, it is uh, one second. It is uh, yeah, in this case, minus and false. That means the Z value is not falling in the rejection region area. Can we say like that? Is this correct? So in this case, uh, we fail to um, reject the null hypothesis because uh, if it is less than this one, that means it is falling in the rejection region area, we can reject the null hypothesis. Since it is not less than this value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So based on the, what we conclude now, based on the sample data, we do not have enough evidence at the alpha value 0 0.05, to conclude that the company's claim 500 ml per can is what? All right, so the, the uh, right, so the uh, in this case, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. If we reject the null hypothesis, then, um, you know, uh, sorry, in this case, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. That means, right, um, we don't have evidence at the 0 0.05 level, right, alpha level to conclude that the claim of. Uh, 500 ml per can is false. It is true, right? That is what we are going to conclude it. Is this clear or not? See, if you don't know the basic math, it is a problem. If you are weak in math, please uh, refresh the math also, okay? This is what you were, here we compared the critical, sorry, this one. Um, I, I think I could see that six people responded correctly. This is your Z, Z value, minus 1.4. Here we compare with C dot V. And also you can do the test with the, uh, in this case, you can test it in the uh, Python also. So we have some packages, but in this case, I've used the um, t-test. Okay, uh, the t-test will see, uh, sorry, the p-value method. In this case, I've used the p-value method. So I believe all of you are, with me, uh, except the six people, right? Uh, except the, the six people are okay with me. The rest of you are not, still you are not answering. It's certain things I can help you, right? Certain things I don't think so I can see. This one, I asked you what is the, uh, is this less than or greater than you're not able to answer it, right? So this is uh, false. If it is true, 
that means um, if it is falling here in the rejection region, for example, if you say one point, um, sorry, and the one point uh, here, one point, it, if you get something like this, is this true, right? The sorry, in this case, um, the higher the value, higher the value, which means it is lesser than this value, right? So in the negative, as I said, higher the negative value, which means uh, you know very less value. Okay. So if you compare the negative values, let's say you are comparing two negative values. Of the two values, one negative value is too uh, high. That means that value is much lesser than the other value. Compare the bank balance. Let's say your bank balance is min you know, minus 1.96, minus minus 1, whose balance is very bad. Minus very bad. Okay, remember this one. Uh, so, since the Z value is less than the critical value, it is not falling in the rejection region area. Sorry, it is not uh, less than that. Hence, it is falling in the non-rejection region area. In this case, Z is 4.14. 4.14 is obviously... Um, yeah, in, in this case, uh, yeah, 4.414. We'll put this grade then sign here. It is true, right? So in this case, uh, minus 1.414 is obviously greater than minus one because this one is, you know, uh, you know, has a bigger value than this. Hence, it is falling in this place. If it is less than this one, then it is falling in the rejection region. Hence, we fail to. So in this case, the Z value is not falling in this uh, rejection region area. It is falling in the non-rejection region area, somewhere here, 1 1.44, 1.4, 1.6, 1.5, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9. See, in the x-axis, it's like that, right? Guys, what happened? So here, you will have uh, minus 1, minus 1 1.02, minus 1.2. It's a 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, and 1.6, 7.8, 1.9, right? So all these are negative value. So when you come uh, from uh, right to left, uh, the, the leftmost win will have the highest value, right? It has a highest thing, okay? So in this case, the Z value is falling in this non-rejection region area. Hence, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we are going to conclude that whatever the statement or the claim made by the car manufacturer is true. That is what we are going to conclude it. So this is one way of conducting the uh, hypothesis test, uh, single sample hypothesis using uh, z-test, okay, because we know the population standard deviation. In this case, we are comparing the z-value with the critical value, that's all. Okay, and um, See, don't confuse about the alpha and all. Don't worry about that. I will explain it a little later. You will be able to understand very clearly, okay? If the Z value is less than critical value, then it is falling in the rejection region area. In this case, because the Z value is negative here, okay? Since this is not less than this one, it is falling in this non-rejection region area, okay? So, uh, in this case, uh, you know, yeah, that is what is happening. Hence, we fail to reject null hypothesis. We are going to control that. So we have another method called uh, uh, the p-value method. Instead of comparing the z with critical value, we have some other technique called p-value method. In that case, what we are going to do is we are going to find out the area of this rejection region areas on the left side and both side. We need to find out the rejection uh, you know, uh, region area. So that is what your p-value. What are the area that you get it, that is what your rejection region area, okay? So in our case, uh, the Z value is minus 1.414, okay? So in that case, you need to look up another table, so not this Z distribution table, because if you want to use the p-value method, so far we discussed the critical value method. We have another method called p-value method. For that, you need to use another table called, uh, another table, okay? In this case, you can see this one. So here we have minus, um, 1.4, where can you see minus one? Z values minus 1.414, right? So in this case, minus 1.4 is available here. This is slightly different way of looking up here, okay?
minus 1.4. So what is the z value? Z is equal to minus 1.414, right? So in this case, minus 1.4 only is there. We cannot get all the time all the value. But again, let's ignore this one. But let's say minus 1.41. So minus 1.4, 0 0.01. How much you will get? Minus 1.4.01, you will get 1.41, right? So here, this is the value you need to get, take it. You need to pick up from here, okay? So in this case, um, yeah, this is the one, okay? So uh, in this case, since we are conducting the two tail test, you need to multiply this by 2, 2 into, for example, here, uh, 0 0.075, um, 0 0.0756, okay, 0 0.0756, since it's a, you know, the two-tail test, you need to multiply this, you will get 0 0.15, 0 0.15, okay, you'll get 0 0.15. In this case, you remember one simple technique, P is less than alpha, Reject the analyzer. This is a universal truth. Even if you study PhD in statistics, this remains same. So what is the p-value we are getting it? 0 0.15. What is alpha value? 0. Point. I told you just memorize this one at this moment. Okay. Don't think to me. Alpha is 0 0.05. So what is my p-value? 0. 0.15. Is that less than this one? Is that at least can someone tell me so that I can understand your people are concentrating here or not? It's a very simple one. 0 0.15 is less than 0 0.05. Yes, yes, yes. All of you are correct, except few. Most of them. Guys, uh, have you decided? Are you feeling sleepy? Can I cancel the session? Can we have the session next week? So I want this to be more um, engaged one. I want you all to please participate here. I'm not asking you any question, okay? I simply asked, is this 0 0.15 is less than 0 0.05? That's all. Otherwise, I will call each and every one of you to check this one. So, Jivanandam, are you there? Jivanandam and uh, Deepika, you, sorry, Deepika, you answered it. And uh, Pradeep, can you tell me is this uh, same or not? Sorry, is this uh, p value less than alpha or not? Simple, you are very simple. Don't be shy. Okay, I think you guys are. J. Prashant says no. Very good, right? And how about others? No, yeah. 0 0.15 is less than 0 0.05. No, right? Hence, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Only if the p-value is less than alpha, you are going to reject the null hypothesis. See, in the case of uh, critical value, you need to look up in the other table, Z, norm, C, Z distribution, standard normal distribution table. In the case of p method, Again, you need to use the standard normal distribution table, but is a p-value method. This is the table. Okay, I will share it if you want it. I, you know, you can see that one also. So there, how do I look up? But here, the way you look up is slightly different. The way there you look up is slightly different. But guys, believe me or not, the p is less than alpha. P-value method is the one, you know, is used in practice by most of the. So, but if you look at this one, it's a very simple one. The same thing I tried here. Look here, what does the sample mean? Whatever so far I calculated, right? Look here, this is my Z statistic. And this is the one that uh, gives the p-value. All we need to do is compare if the p-value is less than the alpha value. That's all, okay? If the p-value is less than alpha. So alpha is there in our mind. So if the p-value is, what is the p-value? 0 0.15. 0 0.15 is less than 0 0.5. No, hence we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. We can get the Z score and uh, with the help of the Z score, we are, we are going to find out the P value. What is my Z score value? Minus 1.414. Look here. This is what I mentioned. Right. Look here on the right side. Z equal to minus 4.1. This is the Z value we computed, right? So whether it's a critical value or a P value method, the Z calculation remains same. This is where you just use the Z is equal to sample mean, population mean, divided by sigma, divided by square root of n. This is where population standard division, this is where sample size, this is where sample mean, this is where population hypothesized mean. So in this case, the 500 ml was there in the can. 
and here you have 498 in the sigma is 10 given and uh, square root of uh, 50 cans. This one gave me this number minus 1.414. Okay, so in this case what we are doing is this z value you are going to do a lookup directly in this table. Since there is no uh, you know value directly available for minus 1.414 what we are doing is ignore the last one because uh, if you take the two decimal, right, if you round it off with two decimal, minus 1.41. So minus 1.41 is not there, but at least minus 1.4 is there. And if you see in the column 0 0.01, if you add these two things, you will get 1.41. So what value is there? That value, you need to take it up and you need to multiply this by two. Since we are conducting a two tail test, so you need to multiply that by two. So when you multiply that by two, you get 0 0.15. And um, it is obviously less than 0 0.05. Is it clear? Yeah, good, good. Soundarya, you're able to understand. Shruti, you're able to understand. And uh, Sangeeta, good. And Deepika, Deepa, you're good. How about others? Okay, those cannot understand, please watch my video. But you have to analyze, understand it, and then come back with your questions, okay, in the upcoming weekdays during lunchtime. So, we discussed about uh, the one sample, Z-test. To conduct the Z-test, we need to know the population standard deviation. In the Z-test itself, there are two types. The one is, you can use a critical value, and you can use the p-value method. p-value method is the popular one. All the statistics software, they are using that one. But manually to find out the area of your rejection region area, you need to do a lookup uh, in the um, Z distribution, two-tailed p-value table. So this is the one. So you need to do a lookup here. And the other one is uh, pretty straightforward. In the previous case, critical value, Pretty straight for 1 minus alpha, alpha is 0 0.05, you get the whatever the value divided by 2 because 2 tail test, right? So, in that case, what will happen is you need to, um, so you need to find out the values, the intersecting values. You need to find out the intersection. So, 1.9. So, this is the value I saw it. And this value, the way how we uh, get the critical value is different from how we find out the uh, p value. In the case of p value, we are directly using the z value. See, non statistics student, it will be confusing initially. Don't worry. Watch my video at least two to three times. Okay. In this case, we have used the z value directly to do a lookup. So, where is 1.4 and 0. Point, right? So, these two where it intersects, that value you need to take it up, okay? And then you need to multiply that by two. And then you need to multiply this value by two. And let's say you get 0 0.05. This is what your P value. This P value is 0 0.15. Let's, you know, if you do this, you'll get somewhat close to this. And less than alpha is 0 0.05. Alpha, I told you already, you know, always you just think it's a 0 0.05. So since P is less than alpha, we are, you know, since if it is a P is less than alpha, reject the null hypothesis. But here it is not less than alpha, hence we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we explored uh, as part of one sample t test uh, what is uh, the critical value method, what is the p value method, and also I have shown you in the Python. Look here in this case. Uh, you know, you have a package called scipy.stats. You simply you need to uh, import this package. And in this package, there is something called stats um, method. And this is a common function uh, to perform any mathematical calculations, right? You need to use impi, numpy. We know what is sample mean. And then the population mean, we know that. And then standard deviation, we know that. Sample sizes, we know that. Simply plug in the value in this one. That is what your z-score value, minus 1.414. And here, the p-values, there is a, you know, the method called, in the stats uh, method, you have another function called norm.cdf. This one, z-score, this one gives you, you don't have to do a lookup manually in the table and all. You don't have to have this headache and all, okay? You don't have to do that. Simply, 
if you know this function, that is enough. Okay. The z score value, look here in this case, I just directly pass it here. In the case of uh, p value method, we need to do a z score, you need to do a lookup of z score in that table. You remember the same you know, idea here. It's a z score, we are passing it as an argument to this function. Uh, you know, and you need to multiply this by two. And uh, you know, the output of this one gets stored here in the p value. So this is what your p value. Don't worry, Python will see it uh, in depth. We will go step by step. Okay. But if I execute it, you don't have to, with this method, you don't have to have a headache of go and check uh, manually what is the p value, all this thing you don't have to find out. Okay. So here it gives us this, you know, the, the p value, everything, z score, everything. We know the p values less than alpha. That means you need to reject the null hypothesis. In this case, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. That's it.